Hey guys, this video is going to be about installing FreeNAS. So the first thing we're going to do is just Google FreeNAS and freenas.org will come up and we're going to click on the download link. And if we just scroll down to the bottom of this, you can put your email and name it there if you want to, but uh, I'm going to click no thank you. We're going to click download under FreeNAS Corral. And that'll start downloading. So our ISO has finished downloading. Um, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to use DD to prepare a USB stick for FreeNAS uh, for the installer. Um, if you're on Windows, you can use uh, a DD for Windows, or if you're on Linux, the process is going to be almost exactly the same as this, except for your uh, USB stick is going to have a different device file name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a disk util list. And I can see that I have dev disk 0 and dev disk 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB stick and do disk util again, disk util list again. And I see that I now have another disk, dev disk 2, and it's 8.1 gigabytes in size. So that's going to be my USB stick, right? So if you're on Linux, if you do a D message or pseudo D message, uh, you should see after you plug that USB stick in what device file that gets assigned to, right? Um, probably DevSDB if you only have one drive in your system normally. Uh, could be DevSDC. You'll just have to look and see. The next thing we're going to want to do is, uh, since this USB drive already had a partition on it, it was automatically mounted when I plugged it in. So what I'm going to want to do is sudo umount dev disk2 and if you double tab there, it'll show you the partitions on there. Um, they call, they're called slices on Mac, so disk 2 S1, and that's what I want to unmount. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo uh, dd if, if equals, we're going to choose the ISO file. IF is for input file. So download freenas corral 10.0.0. Well, 10.0.2 to ISO is the newest right now. And then we're going to do OF equals dev disk, the disk that we, uh, the, our USB stick, disk 2. Then hit enter. And that's going to take a while. And when it's finished, you'll know because uh, you'll be dropped back to a command prompt and you won't see any errors. So to install FreeNAS on a physical system, we're going to need at least two USB drives. Um, but recommend it three because what you want to do is we one drive uh, is for the installer only and then we need at least two drives that are at least eight gigabytes in size um, or well at least one drive two preferred um, that are at least eight gigabytes in size uh, so we can install it on one USB stick but if that fails you I mean and that has your configuration on it you may be out of luck so the best is to use two USB drives and it will install to them like a mirror for redundancy so once that DD to your USB stick finishes, you're going to want to uh, make sure that you um, sudo umount uh, that disk partition again if it gets automatically uh, mounted. And then you're going to want to stick that USB stick into your uh, device that you're installing FreeNAS on, along with the one or two other USB sticks, and make sure you boot from that uh, USB stick via your BIOS options. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be installing into a VM. Um, once we boot up our USB stick, we'll, we'll get the prompt FreeNAS installer. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And the screen's a little weird. Let's uh, go ahead and hit enter. Um, and we'll be presented with all these disks. You'll see the USB stick is on there. Um, hopefully yours is like mine and it's a different size from the rest of them so you know which one it is, the one you booted up from. Um, and the other ones, so uh, I'm simulating two USB sticks here at 8 gigabytes and the rest as hard drives at 20 gigabytes. So I'm going to select, if you only have one, you just select the one USB stick, but if you have two USB sticks, go ahead and select both um, by hitting your space bar when you're uh, arrowed onto that one. And then go ahead and hit enter to hit OK. And we go ahead and hit yes, we want to proceed with the installation even though it's going to erase those drives. We create a password for our root user.
Uh, I'm just going to choose bias on this. You can choose UEFI if you have a motherboard that supports it and you want to use that. And we're going to get a countdown here of through five steps. And on each one, you'll see some dots, and then it'll hit um, some numbers along the way, which is a percentage, I guess. It'll hit 10, then 20, then 30, and so on. And that's going to take a little while to get through its thing, depending on how fast your hardware or disks are. So once the installation is complete, it's going to prompt us to remove our bootable media. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and hit OK and then restart. And then once it's restarting, um, or once your computer restarts, you can remove that bootable USB. And of course, leave the other two USB sticks that we installed to plugged in. Um, and then once uh, you're booting back up again from the hard drive, uh, you'll be prompted with uh, this screen. Let's go ahead and click Enter, Enter for normal boot up. Okay, so once that first boot up finishes, you'll be presented with an IP address. And we're just going to go ahead and type that web address into the browser. And type the root password we created. Okay, so um, there's a wizard we can go through for this stuff, or you can just go through and set up things however you want, but I'll go ahead and go through this and uh, let's see. choose your time zone, hit save, go ahead and hit next, and uh, I'll go ahead and use this in the wizard, but I'll go ahead and do it again. Um, manually through the storage option. And I'm going to select, uh, I'm just going to do virtualization for now, which does uh, two mirrors and a volume, so sort of like a RAID 10. Um, there are uh, other options here if you do media. It's going to do RAID Z1, which is uh, like RAID 5. Um, it has one uh, parity drive lost, to, uh, lost from your storage pool. Um, Backup probably we have RAID Z2, which uses two parity drives, so you can see you have 40 gigabytes here instead of 60 that you would have from RAID Z1. And do the RAID 10 like option. And I'll do different tutorials sometime for Active Directory and LDAP, etc. Users, let's go ahead and add a regular user. Then hit next. If you want to create any shares, like a uh, uh, Apple file share, uh, an NFS share, iSCSI, or Samba shares, you could do it here. iSCSI is a little complicated. I'll do that in a different tutorial. I'm just going to add a Samba share for now. It should automatically put that on our data set that we created. I'll do a different one on how to set up mail sometime. Go ahead and skip that and click submit. And it's still setting up some of those things. It's still creating uh, the volume and stuff. So if we go over to vol or, uh, storage, that volume is not yet created. I'll wait for that. Okay, so that's finished. Uh, I went up to the storage now, and you can see it created volume one. If you go to topology, you see that configuration, the RAID-ish type configuration. If you want to change things there, you could. Um, go to shares, and we can see the SMB folder that was created. And go ahead and delete that. The SMB share and folder. Um, so, on that volume, 
to the data sets. Okay, it didn't delete that SMB volume. I mean, the, yeah, the data set for some reason. So I'll go, go ahead and delete that. But it did create uh, a folder for my user that I created as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and temporarily delete, delete that user for now. And then go back over to storage because I'm gonna delete this entire data set. All right, so now I'm gonna recreate a data set, so I'm gonna hit that plus sign and name this volume one again. Whatever you wanna name it is fine. And then we can go with selecting those profiles again with our disks, but um, you can also just manually drag this in. So if I wanted, these are all showing up as SSDs, but uh, if I had two regular hard drives, you might wanna say, put those under data or, or like a, a good amount of regular hard drives, put those under data and set them up however. And then um, you can either set could either set one up as a spare in case one of your drives fails, it would automatically uh, replace whichever one failed in that pool. Or you could, uh, if they were all regular drives and one was an SSD, which was what I was trying to get at before, but got off track, um, you could put it as a cache disk and it would cache writes and, and reads uh, or often read files from that disk. Um, usually I hear that's not that great of a performance thing, the most important thing is to have plenty of RAM uh, for your drives. So uh, the base rule of thumb is one gigabyte of RAM for each one terabyte of drive space. And if you're using ZFS scrubbing, things, features like that, you always want to have ECC RAM. Um, let's see. So, if you want to make a RAID 1 data set, you could just drag those two disks on top of each other and they would become a mirror. If you want to make a RAID 10 data set, drag two more drives in here, drag them on top of each, each other so there's two mirrors that are striped on that data set. Um, drag three of them onto, a data, to, on, onto each other to make a RAID Z1 uh, uh, volume. Well, the whole thing is a volume. It would be a piece of that volume. Uh, you can get more complicated with that too. Like you could just leave it like this with a RAID Z1 and a disk, but you wouldn't want to do that because if you lose some uh, one of the drives on the RAID Z1, you'd be protected still um, and be able to replace that drive. But if you lost this disk, there's no redundancy here. Your whole your whole volume would be corrupt. So you want to have some sort of redundancy set up for any parts of that volume. So RAID Z1, uh, which is like RAID 5, so one parity drive used up, and it's it's spread out across all drives, but uh, so you can lose any one drive in that data set and be good. RAID Z2 uh, uses two drives out of your, two drives worth of storage out of your volume for storing parity information. So you can you lose any two drives in that data set um, and still be good. Uh, usually that's better if you have more than four drives, of course. If you have four drives, I would recommend going with the RAID 10-ish option like this. So in this configuration, you could lose one of the drives in this mirror and one of the drives in this mirror and still be good. But if you lost two drives in any one mirror, you, your data set, your volume would be corrupt. But you would have much better read and write performance with the two mirrors, the RAID 10 like setup, because the, it becomes a bottleneck when you do a small parity RAID, like a RAID Z1 and RAID Z2. Well, RAID Z2 a lot more than RAID Z1. RAID Z1, you'd probably be fine with four drives, but RAID Z2, there's a lot of parity calculation going on, so uh, reads and writes, well, mostly writes when you have a normal data set, there's a lot of parity calculation going on with your CPU to create that parity information to write to the drives. Um, and you lose a lot of performance if when rebuilding those drives. So if like you lost a drive out of that RAID Z1 data set and you needed to uh, spare to take over for that, um, 
you lost all the data of one of these drives, and the parity information on the other three drives is what calculates that mis missing data. And that takes that's pretty uh, CPU intensive when that happens, right? Whereas if you have a RAID 10 sort of setup and you lose a drive, you're still at pretty much you're at full write speed still, if not faster write speed, just a uh, slightly slower read speed and no extra CPU cycles being taken up. Uh, and you would just need to replace that drive. And of course, while it's rewriting that drive, you're going to have some, uh, you know, load issues with your storage, of course. Um, but that applies to any of the other RAID levels as well. So I'm just going to hit save and create that volume. It's taking a second. Um, but that should pretty much complete this tutorial. I'll get into some other specific setup things in FreeNAS and other videos. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.